this video, we're going to look at globalization. But first, let's make sure we understand what globalization actually means. So globalization is the process of countries around the world becoming more interconnected, meaning more trade is done internationally and the world's economies are closer than ever before. It's really important that you remember that globalization is not just selling into other countries. If you give this definition in an exam, you are unlikely to pick up the marks. Globalization, as I have said, is how businesses, people, societies and social groups around the globe are more connected, more intertwined than ever before. Globalization has been helped by technology and the growth of communication networks, the internet, e-commerce, mobile phones, social media, and even improved transport, such as cheap international flights. We have seen an opening up of international borders, allowing people to move overseas to live and work, and the falling cost of transporting goods and raw materials internationally. And all of this means that goods, and importantly information, can be transferred more easily between people in different countries. So globalization can allow businesses to increase their target market. They are no longer restricted to their home country, or even continent, but can potentially do business worldwide, meaning potentially much higher sales. International brands such as Starbucks, McDonald's and Coca-Cola are considered to be multinational companies. We might say MNCs. They produce goods and services in more than one country and they have grown in importance over recent decades. As incomes have risen in many countries, this means that consumers can afford to buy goods and services from these multinational companies. Basically, more people can now afford a Big Mac, so McDonald's have set up in more countries around the world. Now, this seems like a good time to introduce Silvio Moltisanti, our video's main example, who runs a business called Sills Fiery Pepper Sauce. Silvio is an Italian chef based in Florence. He created a popular pepper sauce brand based on his grandfather's recipe. Thanks to globalization, he has been able to build popularity for his grandfather's sauce across Europe and the USA, and he now sells his products to many different countries. Silvio studied English, French, and German at school, and this has really helped him communicate with these overseas markets. Silvio's social media campaign catches the eye of one of the senior managers at one of the major supermarket chains here in the UK. They contact Silvio as they think that their customers will love the product and the story behind it. They agree to sell his fiery pepper sauce in their stores across the UK for a trial period. So things are looking up for Sil and his business. The ability to sell your products all over the globe, just like Silvio is, certainly is a huge benefit of globalization but there are many others. To all the teachers out there, show all of these videos without any ads and gain access to our growing library of over 500 teaching worksheets. Why not visit bizwizard.co.uk to find out more. Globalization can bring businesses access to cheaper goods and raw materials in other countries, meaning lower production costs. It can allow businesses to access cheaper labor overseas, as UK wages are relatively high in comparison, this means savings can be made by outsourcing to countries with lower wage rates. For example, many call centres for UK businesses are now based in countries such as India or Poland, where many workers speak good English but wage rates are lower than here in the UK. Some businesses have chosen to change location to be nearer to suppliers or to cheap labour. For example, Dyson, which manufactures products such as vacuum cleaners, hand dryers and fans, have already moved some of its production from the UK to overseas, including Singapore and Malaysia. So is everything good when it comes to globalisation? Is it just a good thing? 
Well, the flip side of this is that UK businesses now have more competition from overseas businesses than ever before. As a UK-based entrepreneur, you are no longer simply going up against businesses in your town, your city, or even your country, but against every business around the globe. It might also mean that there are fewer jobs here in the UK. As I have said, we have comparatively high labour costs. Workers here simply cost more money, which may increase the cost of producing products domestically, meaning producing them here in the UK. So businesses who choose to manufacture here will have lower profit margins, particularly if they can't increase their prices. If it costs too much to produce a product here in the UK, then a business might relocate just like Dyson did, and this means that jobs here are sadly lost and people find themselves out of a job. So if these businesses, who operate from other countries, have significantly lower wage and production costs, how can UK businesses ever hope to compete? Well, there are a number of what we refer to as barriers to international trade. Let's look in a little more detail at what I mean. So, you need to understand that there are tariffs, which are imposed on imports. To import means to sell products into a different country. So Silvio, our example, is importing his source into the UK. So what is a tariff? Well, tariffs are taxes imposed on imported goods brought in from other countries. This can be done in order to protect local producers from failing to compete with the cheaper imported goods of their overseas rivals to kind of make it more of a fair competition. But these tariffs, these taxes, can sometimes prevent the growth of global trade and actually increase the cost of living for consumers like me and you. Think about it. If tariffs are too high, then there may be no cheap imports. This will result in an increase of the cost of buying the goods and services that we need, which reduces our ability to spend money. Bring this video and over a hundred more to life with fun, interactive games, quizzes and case studies. Why not try the first 25 completely free by visiting bizwizard.co.uk. Now, linked to these tariffs is what we call a trade block. This is an agreement between a group of countries who agree to trade freely between themselves, paying no tariffs, but they agree together to charge tariffs on imports from other countries that are not part of their agreement. They're not part of their trade block. Examples of trade blocks include the European Union. This has 27 European member states, now that Britain has withdrawn. It's led by Germany and France, and it allows free movement of goods and labour within a single market backed by a common EU-wide legislation. And then you have the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. This is made up of 10 members, including Thailand and Vietnam. It allows free movement of goods and was started in 1965 with just five members and its members' countries have all enjoyed economic growth. And then finally, you have NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Association. America, Canada and Mexico. It allows the free movement of goods between the three countries. In September 2018, though, the United States, Mexico and Canada reached an agreement to replace the NAFTA with the USMCA, the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement. So now that we have an understanding of what globalisation is and how tariffs and trade blocks work, let's think about the advantages and the disadvantages of globalisation for businesses just like Sill's fiery pepper sauce. Due to globalisation, Silvio has been able to increase the target market for his sauce. He can now sell his products to customers across Europe and the USA, not just in Italy, meaning much higher sales, particularly as he now has a deal with a huge international supermarket. Silvio has been able to take advantage of improved technology and communications, 
and his own ability to speak four languages, which is also, due to globalisation, has been a distinct advantage when doing business with other countries. Cheaper and quicker international transport has certainly been in Sill's favour when it comes to exporting his products overseas and importing them into countries like the UK. The costs of achieving this before these improved transport links would have been astronomical. Again, due to globalisation, Silvio may potentially be able to access cheaper raw materials from overseas, meaning lower production costs for his business. Finally, he may be able to access cheaper labour overseas and outsource some of the production of his sources to countries with lower wage rates than Italy. This could increase his profit margins and lead to greater success. Each of the video courses over at bizwizard.co.uk also includes an interactive business case study that applies the knowledge learned to a real world scenario. There are over 1,000 multiple choice questions, each with detailed feedback, which tests students' understanding of the content. Why not visit bizwizard.co.uk to find out more? As usual, there are of course some potential disadvantages of globalisation for businesses just like Silvio's. Globalisation has increased competition all around the world, so Silvio now faces competition from businesses based in other countries. This could impact his sales in Italy, but also mean he loses shelf space in the UK supermarkets. Increased globalisation has also been linked to various environmental challenges, many of which are serious, including deforestation and a loss of biodiversity, increased greenhouse gas emissions and other forms of pollution caused by the increased transportation of goods around the globe. Finally, as Silvio sells into multiple countries, he is impacted by changes in the exchange rate. If the value of the euro, the currency used in Italy, increases, then Silvio may see a decrease in exports to the UK, the USA, and other countries outside of the eurozone, because it will cost them more money to buy it in euros. So, we've seen that globalisation is a result of improvements in communications and transport, meaning that different countries are becoming more interconnected, and more trade is done internationally. We've seen that globalisation has its advantages. Businesses can increase their target market. They can access cheaper goods and raw materials, meaning lower production costs. Globalisation can allow businesses to access cheaper labour, and some may choose to even change their location. So, increased globalisation can certainly be a huge benefit to a business. However, if you get a question about globalisation in the exam, don't forget to make sure your answer is balanced by talking about some of the potential disadvantages, the limitations, the, the downsides. In particular, UK businesses now have more competition from overseas businesses. Rises in UK exchange rates may lead to a decrease in UK exports and relatively high UK labour costs may increase the cost of production here in the UK, making it uncompetitive. The interconnectivity of nations is only going to become stronger and as globalisation increases over the years, this will have significant implications on the business environment in the future. This has been the Biz Wizard. See you in the next video.